Hello New Life Baptist Church, it's good to share another devotion with you as you work through your A to Z of who's who in the Bible. And today we get to Q for Quirinius and I really thank you for giving me this subject uh, because obviously Quirinius is someone dear to my heart, maybe the most significant figure in the whole of the scriptures other than Jesus. Not, thank you New Life, yeah I know what you're doing, Q, Quirinius, he's the only person who begins with Q, there's nothing to say about him so Oh, we'll give him to the regional minister because he can have this problem. Thanks very much. Well, you get your, I'm getting my own back now because I've got my big thick Bible commentary on Luke's Gospel and I'm going to read what it says about Quirinius. After holding a military command against the Marmaridae in North Africa, question mark, Publius Sulpicius Quirinius became consul in 12 BC. At some point during the next 12 years, he subjugated the Homanadenses, a race of brigands on the south border of Galatia, etc, etc, etc. But to be serious, Luke includes Quirinius, this little mention of who was governor at the time when Mary gave birth to Jesus. To remind us that what he's writing is not just a made up story, but these are historical events rooted in time and space. It's not a legend. Jesus is a real person. The things that you're going to read in Luke's Gospel, he's saying, are things that happened. We can trust them because they took place. You can trust them. I can trust them. Luke is also reminding us of the powers who are at work in politics and in the military. This census is one of the Roman Empire's ways of saying to the Jews, we're in control, you do what we say, we are the boss, you have no power, it's us who call the shots. And yet in spite of that, God is at work. In fact, because of the census, a prophecy is fulfilled. Jesus comes from Nazareth, or Mary and Joseph come from Nazareth to Bethlehem and Jesus is born there to fulfil a prophecy of Micah. Quirinius doesn't know that. Quirinius is dead before the prophecy is ultimately completely fulfilled. God's at work in and through the politics and his kingdom outlasts the kingdoms of Rome or any other empire or any other politician or dictator. And so as you read of Quirinius it's important to remember that we live in a world where politics plays out and influences what we do. Laws are set and we are required to obey them. Sometimes good laws, sometimes bad laws. In a democracy, we have more influence over those laws than the Jews would have done. Let's use that influence well. But even if the worst happens, God's kingdom will outlast even the greatest of empires. God's kingdom will overcome even when dictators try to silence the voice of the church or of people of faith. God's kingdom will be fulfilled. It will come to its completion. There will be justice and peace and goodness and God's shalom in all the earth. Let's pray. We pray for the Quiriniuses of our day who govern us, local politicians, regional, national politicians, those who use power well and those who use power badly. May you bring them to an awareness of the limitations of their role and that they are answerable before you. May our governors govern well over our lives, we pray. But Lord, may your kingdom come. May we trust in you and not in our politicians. May we give ourselves to your kingdom and not be afraid, even if that brings us into conflict with politics. Give us that hope and certainty and encouragement today that your justice, peace, life, truth, grace will outlast and will conquer bad, the limited 
human power that exists in politics. The good at times as well. But always mixed and never perfect. You are the one in whom we trust. We give ourselves to you this day. Amen.